Hey everybody, this is Paul, and today I'm going to show you a fast method to extract seeds to grow from dragon fruit. So it doesn't really matter the variety. Now this one, I, it came from Florida, and it could have been the humidity or the all the rain or the t hurricanes they hit out there, but this fruit was not at the best texture or quality, but either way I'm still interested in growing the seeds to use as rootstock. And just to uh, explore this variety. So what I like to do is I first will take the seeds from the center because that is usually the sweetest spot of the dragon fruit and the seeds seem to be pretty large. So I do that and I just put them right into the water and I'll repeat that method. Now if it was different fruit I would not mix if it was different varieties I should say I would not mix seeds you you want to keep track of what you have here now, I have no idea what these are uh, cross-pollinated with but again I just want to use this as rootstock in the future so I'll take a few more seeds now, this is kind of what happened to a lot of the fruit by the way it just seemed a little bit the texture seemed off I think that had to do with all of the rain that they've gotten in Florida. So it doesn't really matter how you cut the dragon fruit either way, just as long as you go for those seeds in the center. And some varieties will have a lot more seeds, some will be larger, like the Plora. But these ones are kind of nice and small. And you can still eat the dragon fruit if you want. Let me get the last of these. That wasn't so much in the center, but that's good. And let's take a few more here. Okay, so that's the first step. After you extract them and put them in water, you'll see most of them like to sink. So let me get set up and I'll show you how I like to pan for gold to separate all of that flesh in there from the seeds. And let's do that now. So what I like to do is I'll stir it up really well and kind of irritate the water and separate the seeds from that pulp. You don't want that pulp in your growing media because it will turn to mold and that can cause the seeds not to sprout or to rot. So I like to give them a good toss let them sink to the bottom. The most viable seeds, they say, are at the bottom. They like to dump out that excess, get rid of all that pulp. And you're just gonna repeat this a few more times until they're clean seeds without any of that flesh in there, or about 99% of it is gone. So I usually will use this panning for gold method about four or five times. That was a little bit too much water, that's okay. And it is okay to kind of grab some of it or just squish it lightly with your fingers to kind of get those seeds separated. So let me finish separating these. I'll repeat that process a few more times and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so this is looking good. I think I saw one more chunk in there that I, there it is. So I usually finish it off by getting that, those less little few chunks with the spoon. Oops, there we go. And then any floating seeds, sometimes people say they're not viable, so I usually toss those unless I really need the seed. All right, now the last step is you have some choices here. I like to remove the water and until it's just about like that, that's perfect. And then if I want to plant them at a later date, I'll put them on wax paper. So get as much water as you can off of the seeds and you can place them on wax paper and spread them out, which can be a little tricky is the spreading out part because they still have like this little sheath of, I guess, plant flesh. So as long as you separate them out pretty well, it's about what I do. And then I let it dry somewhere where it can dry nicely indoors uh, and then I can plant them at a later date. But usually I like to plant them straight into the soil. So let me go show you how I do that right now. So here's the last step. I have my growing media after I labeled it and dated it. 
And I used to use different types of growing meter, but honestly, I just use my mixture and it works great. So I try to separate them out into the soil as much as possible. So that way you can pull them apart later as they get bigger. There we go. And then you want to water them in really well right away. And keep, them, keep them wet all the time. I water them almost every day, probably about five to six times a week, just like that. And they'll sprout in no time. So you can see here, eventually you want to prune it so it channels all of its growth up one branch. You can see I broke that one this morning on an accident. But that is a seedling that is developing nicely. So again, you want to cut them off all the extra branches and this is the fastest way to get it to fruit you can see here i've had lots of success using this method here is some specific potting soil method for seedlings some potting soil i should say that jiffy stuff organic and it i didn't notice much of a difference if anything it retains less moisture and i have to water it more and here are my brand new Soleta series hybrids so I'm excited to see what becomes of those in the future. And if you want to speed up the whole process, it's really easy to give those seedlings a graft. Just like that. And that way you can get your seedling to produce fruit in anywhere from 18 to 36 months, I would guess. All right, there you go. Give us a like and a subscribe. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.